Hi there! In this video I'm going to show you how you can design and build a very simple 20 decibels coupler. A coupler is a standard RF building block and it's very useful for sensing the output power of power amplifiers for instance. More advanced versions can be used for reflection measurements and network analyzers use them for that purpose. Let's get into it. So let's have a look what a coupler looks like. Now on the left here we see the symbol. Now normally on the input the signal comes in and at the transmitted output the signal comes out. We have a coupled port that receives a small portion of the input signal and an isolate port, isolated port that ideally receives nothing. So let's do some basic math here. So a 20 dB coupler means that 1% goes to the coupled port. So if 1 watt goes in here, 10 milliwatt comes out here. Isolated port receives nothing and the transmitted port receives minus minus 0.04 dB. That's 1% of power loss. In reality, of course, there will be a little bit more loss because this is perfectly ideal. And also in reality, this number from input to isolated will not be minus infinity. Now you can use these things in all directions. So on the left top, we see the normal situation where you go in here, go out here and have a couple in an isolated port. But you can also use this thing in the other direction. If you put the signal in here, you will get everything basically mirrored in the Y axis. And you can also mirror everything in the x-axis, as you can see here. You can go in into the coupled port, and then the transmitted port will be here. The coupled port will be basically this one, and the isolated port will be this one. So this is also why this thing is very useful for doing reflection measurements. Imagine the signal coming in here, going out here. You receive 20 dB of the forward signal, the signal going towards, for instance, an antenna. And if the antenna reflects, then signal comes back. And that's basically this picture. So you get a minus 20 dB sample of the reflected signal and nothing to the coupled port. So you can measure the reflection coefficient basically. Now this is that example that I just mentioned. Let's assume you have a 1000 watt power amplifier and you would like to know what kind of power are you transmitting and what kind of power is coming back from the antenna. Now in this case you want to use a 30 dB coupler probably because if you use 20 dB you still have 10 watts here. With a 30 dB coupler you get 1 watt here which is very acceptable to measure. Now signal goes in, you receive your sample here goes to the antenna if the antenna reflects anything then you get a sample of that signal here so this is very practical if you're running a power amplifier and this is also how network analyzers work basically with an ideal coupler you only have to measure the transmitted port here and the reflected port here and you can figure out exactly what the s11 or return loss or input match is of this antenna now let's see what all the important parameters of a coupler are. So we have the coupling factor, we discussed that already, that's from input to the coupled port. We have the loss, that's basically from the input to the transmitted port. Then we have the bandwidth, we didn't discuss that yet, but generally these things are resonance structures, so the simple one we're making is roughly working from 1 to 2 gigahertz, but you can get much more advanced versions. Mini Circus, for instance, has one that goes from 1 gigahertz to 65 gigahertz, which is pretty extreme. It'll also set you back about 3300 US dollars but now you're talking about space age stuff basically and then another very important parameter is directivity so what is directivity directivity is the difference of the loss from the input to the coupled port and the input to the isolated port so let's assume our simple coupler has a directivity of 5 db so what does it mean the loss from input to coupled is minus 20 the loss from input to isolated is minus 25 the difference between these two is 5 decibels so it's good to realize what directivity means. Basically, if you want to use this thing to measure the difference between the transmitted and reflected power, if your directivity is infinite, you will only see on this port a portion of the power moving from left to right. And on this port, you will only see a portion of the power moving from right to left. Now, the lower the directivity, the more you get a little bit of both at each port. So that means you have to calibrate for it if you want to do it very accurately, if you want to do a very accurate reflection measurement. So that's what they do in network analyzers for instance. So a high directivity is something that you won't like to have in a coupler. So it sounds like a pretty magical component because it can make the difference between signals moving one way and the other way. Actually, in practice, these things look extremely simple. Now on the left top, we see the PCB design of the coupler we're looking at in this presentation. It's just two lines, two transmission lines. There's a ground plane below this. And all you have to do is make two lines that run along each other over a certain distance with a specific distance between the lights. And that's all there is to it. And here on the left bottom, you actually see the board. Now I messed up the names, so don't look at these names this is the input port the transmitted port the coupled port and the isolated port now the question is how do you calculate the parameters of this thing calculations turn out to be relatively simple so the first thing you need to do is calculate the coupling factor 
C. Assume you want a coupling of minus 20 dB, like in our case, you just fill in 10 to the power of minus 20 divided by 20, that means 0.1. So C is 0.1. Now what you have to calculate is the even and odd impedances of these coupled microstrip lines. Now I'm not going into the theory there, I'm just going to show you the formulas which are really quite simple. ZL is 50 ohms, you have 1 plus 0.1 and 1 minus 0.1 and that gives you ZL. E. And in the same way, you can calculate ZLO, just the plus and the minus signs have swapped. That'll give you 55.3 and 45.2 ohms. So now the question is, how do you use these numbers to get the actual parameters of those microstrip coupled lines? And there's a really good tool for that. It's called Cux. It's actually free and I'm going to show you how you can do it. If you want to get the knowledge of 42 years of experience in electronics and decrease your chances of getting your electronics design right the first time, I have a free guide for you. But I'm also working on a paid professional course that goes a lot further. In this course, I'll show you how to take a conceptual schematic and turn it into a working board with a very high chance of getting it right the first time. My designs are almost always first time right and it's due to a large list of things I learned and rules I've developed. I'm going to show you how to apply all that knowledge as you turn a conceptual schematic into a finished schematic and then turn it into a completed layout. In detailed video presentations, I'll guide you through the whole process. I'll also set up a forum for asking questions and I plan to have a live video session with a course participants for one hour a week for a four week time period. All this is meant to completely transform your knowledge on how to successfully develop an electronic product. I have a course information page where you can find more information. Link is in the description. I plan to launch this course in the beginning of 2025. I don't have an exact date yet. I'm not going to rush because I want this course to be the best I can make and that takes a lot of time. I really hope you to see you there and boost your knowledge. In the meantime, check out my free electronic product development checklist. The course is loosely based on that and it's completely free. Before we can enter all the parameters in Cux, we need to know what kind of board stack up we're using. So we're using the cheapest material there is. We're using FR4 with a height of 0.8 millimeters. The Epsilon R is 4.7 with 17 micrometers of copper on the top and the bottom. And the bottom will be an unobstructed ground plane. So this is the input field of Cux. Um, I'll show you how you can get there in a moment, but let's first have to have a look at what we need to fill in here. So we start at one, we enter that we want to uh, analyze a coupled microstrip. Step two, we enter all the parameters of the board. So we have epsilon R here. This should be one. The height is 0.8 millimeters. This is the height above the board for the analysis. Put in this large number. The thickness of the copper is 70 micrometer. The conductivity of the copper is stated here. The tangens delta is the loss of the FR4. And this is the roughness of the copper. So we fill all these things in. Third, we fill in the frequency. It's we want to use this thing at 1.5 gigahertz. Four, we enter the ZO even and the Z0 odd and the length. It's critical to understand that the length of these coupled lines should be 90 degrees, a quarter wave. After you fill that in, you press the synthesize button and here we get all the parameters of our coupled lines. There's a picture here on the left. W is the width of the traces. S is the separation between them. L is the length that these traces should run alongside each other. Now let's show you how you can get to this specific screen. You go to tools, line calculation, and then this pops up. So the nice thing about Cux is you can also use it to simulate. So here we have the simulation schematic with the coupled lines and the four ports. This block tells you what kind of simulation you want from 0.01 gigahertz to 4.4 gigahertz with 1001 points. You have to enter the substrate information, which is basically your dielectric, and you have to tell what kind of measurements you want it to simulate. So S11 means the match, S21 means the gain from here to here, S31 means the gain from here to here, and S41 means the gain from here to here. So this is the result that comes out. So now that we have a simulation result, it will be very interesting to compare it to a measurement result. Now this is the measurement setup. A laptop running Nano VNA Saver, a Nano VNA and the actual coupler. Now here you see a detailed view of the measurement setup. Now I've added a 10 dB attenuator because the input match of port 1 of the Nano VNA is not very good. And since we're measuring reflections as well, we need a very good match. So I included a 10 dB attenuator to improve the matching. I used 20 dB attenuators as loads because the loads I have appear to only be good up till about one gigahertz and we're measuring up to 4.4 gigahertz and these attenuators were very good so I'm using those. 
So here you see the comparison of the measurement result versus the simulation result. Now the blue line is the simulations result from Cux. I exported it and imported here into this graph. And what you basically see is the loss from port 1 to 2 and from port 4 to 3. So those are basically the true uh, lines. And you can see that at 1.5 gigahertz, which is our design frequency, we're only 0.1 decibel off of the simulation. So this is very good. Now we can also look at the matching. In an ideal simulation, the matching is usually much, much better because in practice, it's you, you never get as close to that as, as in reality. But we can see that at 1.5 gigahertz, we have a 23 dB match at least, which is very good number, very little reflection. Now let's have a look at the coupling. So this is the transfer from port one to port three. And it's amazing how close it is to the simulation. So the light blue line is the simulation again. S31 is the coupling factor. So that's the transfer from one to three. And you see that at 1.5 gigahertz, we're, we're within a dB, which is very, very good. Same thing is true for the isolation. So that's the gain from port one to port four, basically. And we see that at 1.5 gigahertz, these numbers are right on top of each other. So it's amazing how close you can get with this very simple board material and how incredibly predictable everything is. So let's see what we got in the end. The simulation shows a matching of 44 decibels and in practice we have 23. Well, we discussed that 23 dB is great. The loss on simulation is 0.3 dB and in reality it's 0.4 dB. The coupling is 20.2 and in reality 20.8. That's very close. And the directivity is exactly the same in the simulation as in the real PCB. So this is a great result for using very cheap board material. And this shows you can very easily make one of these yourself at home. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and you can use it in your practical daily life and um, see you in the next one.